The biggest thing that traps players in the trenches is the fact that they think their teammates are the reason behind their forced 50% win rate. This is a widely spread problem but is especially apparent in the lower brackets which reduces the overall enjoyability of the game for everyone. In this video, I will be analyzing a replay of a 3k player who as you can see, thinks that it's not his fault he's stuck in this bracket but it's his teammates. This video will pinpoint every single mistake this player makes that not only ruins his game but also his teams. It will also go over how these mistakes can be fixed and how one can shift his mental perspective towards the game. That will not only make the grind fun but will also help in climbing at a faster pace. The first and foremost thing to worry about is your early itemization on any role pretty much. Your early itemization basically decides how your lane is going to go and on a hero like Anti-Mage where you don't have the capability to jungle early on like how you would on Luna or Templar Assassin or Medusa. You don't have that capability. So if you fuck up your early itemization, there's a good chance that you will lose your lane and will be forced to jungle from a really early point. And as an anti-mage, you don't want that because if you're forced to jungle early on, chances are you're going to get your battle fury post 15 minutes, which is really bad. So uh, in order to understand what is the best itemization for you in any particular scenario, you need to understand who your lane matchup is going to be. So in this case, when we look at the enemy five heroes, we have a bristleback, faceless void and invoker as cores. So it is very obvious that Faceless Void is going to be safe lane, Invoker is going to be mid, and then Bristle is left who is going to be off lane. Now we have to determine who is going to be his lane partner. So either way it's going to be either Pugna or Earthshaker, most likely Earthshaker, right? So when you look at like Bristleback, it just says that this guy is going to spam a lot of quills. You have like three types of itemization. One is where you buy mixed itemization, which is against both physical damage and magical damage. One is completely for spell damage or magical damage. And the third one is for physical damage, right? So when I look at this guy's itemization, it's like he has the right idea in terms of like, yes, I'm going to be laning a Bristleback. He knows that he's going to be laning a Bristleback. So he has like a full magic wand. But the problem with this build is that it does not have a Quelling Blade. It does not have any Tangos, right? So I would say this build is fine if the hero did not need a Quelling Blade. But Anti-Mage needs a Quelling Blade solely because it is a component of Battle Fury, right? So you're going to eventually buy it anyway. So if you skip it early on and you buy it later on, which means that it's going to delay your other items, which means that it's going to potentially delay your treads, which is going to potentially delay your cornucopia and which is potentially going to delay your battle fury timing, right? So in this case, the two, two branches that you have here are like completely useless, which is something that you should not have. So ideally your itemization should not involve magic wand because now what's going to happen is that after runes, you're probably going to get some tangos. You're going to get a quilling blade which means that you're going to spend like 200 gold on additional items, whereas you could just get them from the start of the game, right? That you can basically uh, start the lane with Quelling Blade, Double Branches, uh, Magic Stick, Fairy Fire, and a set of Tangos, right? And you're good to go. And it also helps you last it better in the lane, right? Because you're not going to get tank stick charges from the start of the game, right? Like you're, It's not like, yeah, I'm going to go in the lane, he's going to spam 10 quills and I'm going to have 10 stick charges. That's not going to happen. So we need to be very conservative with how we're going to buy the items. The idea is fine, but then it's just like, you're going to struggle in last hitting and then you're going to struggle with HP region and stuff like that. Okay, now moving forward. Let's see what uh, this player has to do. So he's going towards this lane. I like the decision that he's not looking to fight for bounty runes because usually I see core players going for the bounty rune fights. But I think this player understands that as an anti-mage, I cannot offer anything in terms of a fight. Basically, if your hero does not have any form of nuke, uh, stun, slow, or root, anything like that, your hero does not offer any capability in terms of like fighting for the bounty rune. So all you can do is just basically chill and hope for the best. So what this player do is doing wrong here is that he's standing here where he cannot do anything. Like this is a place where he has zero impact. Whereas what he should do instead is that he should move here. He should take this watcher. And once he takes this watcher, he's going to have vision of the enemy. So, and then he can just go hide behind this tree line, right? Where they can't see him. Unless they have vision, which is very unlikely that's going to happen, right? So if he doesn't see anyone moving from this place, he can just take the bounty and just like be on his way. If he sees someone being here, he can just go back, right? So if we go on free camera, both sides. So this is the situation, right? Anti-mage is standing here. There's like no information at all for him. And then it's like, if he had this, he would see the Earthshaker move like this, and then he could just like potentially go back. But right now he has like no information whatsoever to work with. So he's just like assuming they're going to be here. So he just like goes back from this side, which is also a good decision. But why the thing about bounty is that the more information that you provide your team, the better it is for you guys. It's like when you see 
this situation is like if your team sees that there's two heroes here they might just like even try to go for this rune but you're, you're not providing them with any information at all okay now let's move forwards to the laning stage which is like the most problem so you see there like this set of tangos incoming but no quelling blade right so it's gonna be like a bit harder for him to last it the thing is that this item build is like sometimes good for ranged heroes because they don't buy quelling blade and since they're ranged heroes they're not gonna use a quelling blade to buy a battle fury and they usually just like eat tangos with this but anti-mage does not really gain anything by buying these two iron branches and he needs a quelling blade right for the battle fury so it matters a lot all right so the first thing that you need to do here is that aggro the creeps onto the range so that you don't have to be in an uncomfortable position against two melee heroes right so you do that you do it really late and you do it really poorly so the wave doesn't get there and then you're gonna get denied here okay so the mistake that you're making here is that you're not understanding the fact that the enemy is going to try to contest every single creep right that's how dota works like in terms of like side lanes it's mostly about last setting whoever gets more denies or most more last hits just usually wins the lane right they're playing against two melee heroes and melee heroes have a minimum range right they can only attack in melee range which is like what 200 200 range or something they're not range heroes who can like throw a projectile from a big range and deny creeps for you so in terms of that you have like a very easy solution for this lane which is that you need to bring the creeps to a position where they can't hit them basically anything outside of their vicinity where they can attack right so if you aggro the creeps backwards here right and then you know that this guy wants to deny this you can aggro these creeps away from him where he does not have the attack range i think this thing gives you bonus attack range i'm not sure yeah it does give you a bonus attack range so you have to aggro a bit more in order for this to not get denied but if you don't do it at all you're gonna keep getting denied right so you go here you get denied and now it's like this is like a similar case right now you have to just like aggro these creeps backwards where they can't contest you right so in this case you can just give up the range creep because your hero cannot do anything about it it's like i can't secure the range creep i don't have any spell and if i try to go for it i might lose a lot of hp so it's just like it's best for you to not do it at all so you're like right clicking the bristle which is good because you're draining his mana and without mana this hero is useless and you see here you're gonna get denied again because the creep is like in the vicinity of the bristle to deny it but if you just like aggro it from this position to here they can't do anything right they can't do anything this is good harass i like it we trying arrows being forced you should not do anything here you should just like focus on creeps because if you right click this guy doesn't have do anything seems like Marana's gonna die and unlucky but it's fine but yes, you see the situation is like when you're trying to fight the bristle and you're not thinking about the quill spare stacks, you're just like losing most of your HP. So this is also like another case where people think that, okay, if I aggro the creep backwards, like let's just say if we go backwards here, right? Let's just go here. Okay, so if I aggro the creeps backwards from this point to this point, and what if they come here? Then I can aggro backwards here again, right? And what if they come here again to contest me? Then you can just bring the creeps inside tower. So now most people would think that, okay, if I'm bringing the creeps inside tower, that, that means that my lane is going to push into them. But you need to like think in terms of like, how does the enemy play in terms of the wave, right? So whenever this guy is going to press his W, he's going to push in the wave because it's like an AOE spell that he's going to keep spamming, which is going to push in the wave to you. So when you're in such situations, it's better to actually aggro the, the creeps inside tower and get them killed as fast as possible. Because if you don't do that, there's going to be a time where there's going to be a lot of creeps under your tower, which you cannot do anything about. And they're gonna deny all of them or maybe even kill you right so you're gonna see it happen right here which is that okay so we're not trying to aggro inside tower you see they have like a creep advantage they have like two more creeps than we do and eventually it's gonna like increase now they have like one more and then eventually there's like this wave coming and then their wave is also coming which means that okay so they're gonna have eight creeps and we're gonna have only four and i'm like super low hp so when i'm gonna go here he's gonna zone me out right he's gonna zone me out like he can actually pressure you but he chooses not to do it, which is actually good for you for some reason. Well, I don't know why he pulled this, which is good for you, I guess. But yeah, okay. That was like pretty decent last hitting under tower. And okay, moving forward. Okay, now you have to like aggro backwards again. You, have to, you just have to constantly aggro backwards and then wait for them to just like fuck up a bit so that you can hit them in a good position, right? Right now, if you're just like, you're going to get denied here again. You're going to miss like a lot of last hits just because you're like standing near them. And you see, like, every time you try to last it, this shaker is just, like, hitting you. But imagine if instead of you going to this position, which is your uncomfortable position, you aggro the creeps towards this side. And then you bring the creeps backward here and then just last hit them. It would be very easy, right? 
there, there's a very less chance that they can harass you. There's like a very less chance they're gonna deny this. But here, like when, where they feel comfortable, they can just like right click you con constantly. Okay. And now you're like low HP again. And in the in these situations, usually what I do is that if I if I'm playing against a hero who's gonna constantly give me stick charges, what I do is I would I would just like put my branches on the ground and just like use the stick for maximum efficiency, right? So that I have like decent amount of HP when the wave pushes into me. It's just like you're not trying to aggro at all. Like you just basically don't have any concept of aggroing. Like right now just drag this inside tower. Because he's gonna push it anyway. Okay, you have tango. Um, okay, so. The thing that I talked about is that. Understand the way the enemy um, hero is, wants to play the lane, right? He wants to push in the lane. He was gonna constantly push in the lane. Which means that if the lane is constantly pushed into you. You cannot contest this lotus, right? So. The thing about not aggroing the creeps inside tower and then just like deep pushing the lane at the same pace as the bristle is doing is gonna cost you that. It basically means that they're gonna have the lotus now. And also like one more rule for you is just basically anytime, anytime this range creep is outside of this tower range, you should always aggro on it. The, you did it right now, which is good, but then you should just like not go to it again. Just aggro it backwards again. You can aggro more than once. Like, it's that only 3 second cooldown, right? Now you have to go back. Just because you tried to just go and right click the creep. And now just like, you're so low HP and you know what to do. You can use the sick charges, but you should use it in a way that... Where... You should put the stick on the ground when you do it. Let's see if you do it. You should do it so that you have like enough HP to like, walk up to these guys without being scared. And I guess you won't do it. So this is a good aggro. Like, do you understand that when you aggro like this, they can't contest you and you get 3 CS for free because they cannot dive you inside tower, which is really hard. Okay, you have Band of Elvenskin. Look how late this is because we had to buy a Quelling, we had to buy Tango. So this is like so late. It's been like 4 minutes and also your Courier died, which is also another thing. Okay. You should definitely add Tangos. You should definitely add Boots so that you can evade them more often. Okay. What do you have in your courier? Okay. This is fine, but I feel like boots would be like a slightly better in this lane. Okay, now the lane is pushed in. We're just chilling. It's like you're not doing super bad, regardless of the fact that you're making a lot of mistakes in the lane. Like, a lot of them. I'm not even kidding. You're still higher than this wrestler, right? Which just basically tells you that everyone in your bracket is just like equally bad, if not worse than you. So whenever you feel like, oh, this is just like a hard lane or my team's playing bad or like anything like that, the enemy is equally worse, if not more, right? So you have to like focus on the fact that I, how can I let's like 1v9 this game? Which is like the biggest thing that you have to understand. Okay, you're gonna use stick. Finally, after like a long while, we use stick. Okay, so tangos. Like one tad uh, tidbit that I think most people don't know about the courier is that you see the courier, right? So it has like band on the first slot, tangos on the second, and then gloves on the third slot, right? So anti-mage has only two slots empty. So ideally what anti-mage would want here is to have his band and gloves going first and then the tango so that he can have those two valuable items in his inventory. But that's not going to happen because this item is on the first slot, which means it's going to be on the last slot, which basically means that the pattern of the courier is going to be the opposite of the pattern in your inventory, which means that your gloves are going to be in the, on, the, on the fourth slot, which is the first slot. And then your tangos are going to be on the sixth slot, which is second slot, which is free. And then the band is going to be on the seventh slot, which is the backpack slot, right? Because that is the sequence that courier follows. So if you see here, what you had to do was just basically replace tangos with this in the courier. And then it, it, it wouldn't go in the backpack slot. But now it is. Because now you're going to just basically not have it for the six seconds. So this is some, this is like basically a tip, I think, which is very useful in certain situations where you, let's say you're playing Earthshaker and you have like, oh, my blink's coming with some clarities, right? And usually people buy blink first and then clarity. So clarities have more priority to be in your inventory than the blink. And if you have only one slot, there's going to be a fight where you won't have the slot and you'll have to wait six seconds for the blink because you'll have to replace it from your backpack to your main inventory. Okay. Okay, doing pretty well. They pulled because... So this is like another situation of creep wave timers, right? So if you're not... If you're like unaware of how creep wave timers work, you will not know whether they pulled or not. So in this case, it's just like... At 27, the waves are usually at this curve. So you should be wondering where the enemy wave is, right? You're just like completely clueless at the moment. You don't know where the wave is. And you're like, oh, I'll just the next wave is going to come. And you're like, oh, you don't know where the wave is. And you're like, okay. 
or find it, but then you see, oh, it's pulled. But if you knew the creep wave timers, you would already know that, oh, the wave is just like pulled. So I need to do something about it. And you're just like constantly taking bad trades, right? Just like fighting this guy. Like as an anti mage. Okay, you might be dead here because you're forcing the Lotus and they have stuns. Okay. So, as I was saying, as an anti mage, you only trade with the enemy when they have like wasted their spells. For example, when I see this Earthshaker press his W, I know he's gonna go on a cooldown of five seconds. So now I can actually just right click him and just like deplete all of his mana. Right? And then he can't play the game. But you're not doing that. You're just like trying to trade with him when he has his W, right? So, which is always a bad trade for you. Okay, now you're just like forcing the Lotus rather than just like being in a good position and you end up and then you end up dying, right? So this is like a big thing, right? It's just like, oh, you might be thinking that maybe my Mirana is griefing me or this lane is like really hard, but it's none of those conditions here, right? It's like none of those reasons. The only reason why you died here is because you were low HP and the only reason you were low HP is because you're not aggroing the creeps to a position where they can't harass you. You're constantly going into the wave, into the two heroes where they can just like easily right click you. They're like melee heroes. Who are looking to attack you, right? But they have a minimum rage, with which you can abuse by aggroing, which you are not doing at all. Which is leading you to this death, which means that if, okay, so if I don't have my treads by 6 minutes, which means that I probably will not have my cornucopia by 10 minutes, because I'm playing this lane really poorly. And if I'm playing this lane really poorly, it's gonna delay my battle fury timing, which is like the main thing about anti-mage, right? If you don't get your battle fury in time, then you can possibly get locked out of the map, and then you can lose the game just off of that. So, now you're gonna respawn. Uh, you have two tangos, which is fine. You see, like, now these branches are, like, completely useless. Like, what are you going to do with them? It's just, like, they don't really serve a purpose, right? Again, we're just, like, constantly just walking into them rather than aggroing the creeps to a position where... It's, like, you don't have to blink. You can just aggro the creeps inside tower and just, like, last hit them, right? What's going to happen is that when you're going to aggro these creeps backwards, your two creeps are going to go on their range. They're not going to just, like, ignore these two creeps and just, like, run inside tower to harass you because they also want gold from these two creeps. We're gonna focus on these two creeps while you focus on these two creeps. You just give up the range creep. Like, no one cares about the range creep when you can't do anything about it. Just get whatever you can get from the lane. Now, in your situation where you're gonna try to right click him, but now you're taking damage from three resource, t three sources. You see, now you can actually attack this guy, but then you're not evading him at all. And it's like going towards the creeps again. You're losing most of your HP. Kind of a sad situation. Here, you have the right idea of pulling, but the ma the wave is blocked, the camp is blocked. So you can't do anything about it. So there's like one more thing is that I'm just going to tell you that um, if your position five does not unblock this, you should just buy your own sentry because you're spending like 50 gold for the sentry, but the ROI on it is like really good. Like the return on investment is going to be really good. You, you can constantly pull in the wave, which is, which will give you something in the lane. And then the wave comes back into your tower as well, which gives you a lot of advantages. But at the moment you don't have any, any of those. So now again, just aggro inside tower, right? Rather than going to the creep, aggro it inside tower. Because this wave... So the way you see this wave, it's just like, I have three creeps. They have seven creeps, right? Which means that their lane is going to push into me. And if I'm not doing anything about it, as in if I'm not aggroing these creeps inside my tower, that means that these creeps are going to push into me and then this bristleback can use them as a shield and just like pressure me inside tower. So you need to figure out some a way to get these creeps killed really fastly. Which is but just by aggroing inside tower. Okay, sniper rotation, pretty good. Why don't you just go back here? Why do you want to fight this guy? So the mistake that you're making here is that you're not going back after killing this bristle because this this guy can't chase you, already used his fissure, right? What is he going to do? Run, run after you? He can't do that. You have more movement speed than him. It's like here, he's slowed by the shrapnel. You can just like run back and he can't do anything. You can just go back and farm this wave. But you stay here, you try to right click him. You don't even like turn your threats from agility to strength and then you end up dying because of that maybe your sniper gets a double kill but this is not worth it for you in any way because you whisked out on a full wave and then you also died and you didn't get any kills so now you're in like a really bad situation okay so this is like a really bad decision it's like okay so you have like 500 gold right and you're already really far away from your battle fury it's like you're off schedule right you're basically off schedule and you're not gonna get your battle fury in time which is usually like 13 to 14 minutes, which is like an ideal timing. So you're like 500 gold, and you're gonna spend that into buying a Wraith Band. This later on in the, in the lane. For no reason, right? When you buy this 500 gold item, which means that I'm just basically delaying my Battle Fury by 500 gold. And the situation that you're in is like basically your net worth is like 2.8k in 8 minutes. So if you do the math, 
you're basically getting like 300 to 400 gold per minute which basically means that you're like 1.5 minutes behind when you buy this which means that you've delayed your battlefield timing by 1.5 minutes again so instead of this if you just like save 700 more gold and got a cornucopia which gives you the luxury to just jungle if the things go really bad you can just jungle because you get 5 hp regen you also get 7 damage but you decided to buy the raid band which is going to further delay your timing and if like if you're forced to jungle in this state you're gonna lose this game okay we see here bristol is here and we're just chilling it's like we can push this wave in which is right what do you do right afterwards right so this is where you're making a mistake it's like okay i'm gonna push this lane in usually when you're pushing a lane in you have like another thing that you want to do sometimes you just farm the side camps if you're a hero that can actually do it but you can't so i can't farm the side camp because i don't have cornucopia if i try to farm it i'm gonna lose a lot of hp uh also the fact that this is basically blocked by your teammates so you can't farm it anyway and the next wave right so the options are next wave or we pull right so the next wave is basically if you know creepy timers the next wave spawned six seconds ago which means that it's like around here so if you go free camera the wave is like here which means that the next wave is like really far in so what you should do here is that you should already know this you should already know that where the wave is you need to learn creep F timers you should understand where how they move which is a, which is basically just by going into your own replay or any replay and just like watch them move right so you should already know this which means that okay so the next wave is like really far in and i need to do something productive with my time so what i need to do is that as an anti-mage i really like to i basically really like to farm waves because I can't jungle really well because I'm, I lose all my HP, right? So I need to figure out a way to bring the enemy wave back to my side, right? Because now the wave is like super, it's, it's, it's in a dangerous territory which, where I don't want to be, right? So I need, to, I need to figure out a way to bring the wave back while simultaneously farming something. So the easiest way to do that is by pulling. When you pull a small camp to your next wave, your creep waves will act as a shield for you and you can very easily farm. And by doing that, you also bring the enemy wave backwards to you because you kind of like pulling by yourself. So while we do understand that this is like blocked by the enemy, you didn't do anything to unblock it. Like instead of buying this raid band, maybe you could have bought a sentry. But now what you're gonna do is you're gonna waste a lot of time, right? You're gonna just like go here. You're like wasting time. You're like, okay, what do I do here? You're like very confused. You don't know what to do. You're like mega confused, right? You go here, there's no camp. So you see like you basically wasted half of a minute That's just by doing this. And now you're farming this way in a very dangerous spot, right? And now again, we could pull again, but guess what? We don't have it unblocked, so we can't do it. And now we're farming, now we're in a really bad situation. And now we're like forced to jungle, no cornucopia, nothing. And we have like 3.3k net worth at around 10 minutes, which is really sad, right? So these small mistakes in the lane, not buying the correct early items, not aggroing, not buying the correct later on items, not unblocking your own small camp and being, being a bit like flaming towards your teammates in a sense that oh you should buy it i wouldn't buy it like who cares man this is just a random guy if he doesn't unblock it it's just gonna ruin your own game so why not just spend the 50 gold and unblock it yourself right which makes your game better so now it's like kind of like in a really bad spot. so it's like another situation of creep wave timers right so at this point you're just standing right you're standing here you're just like oh i'll just wait for the next wave but you don't know where it is so you're like confused again but it's gonna be here in three seconds but you don't know that since you don't know creeper timer so you're just like chilling here and you're just like oh i'll just go try and protect my mirana but then you see the wave here and it's like oh i should blink back right so if you know creeper timer this does not happen you should chase this guy uh okay rotation and you died wait what did he have like he did not have any mana for a second okay he has arcane boots makes sense and stick then you should not chase him okay at this point when you see him um fill up his mana you should not chase him because the reason the only reason why we want to chase him is because we're gonna slow him for a lot of uh time because he has no mana but since he popped his arcane boost we don't want to chase him and also another thing is that when you're losing your lane you don't want to put more than two points into this you want to max your blink so you can just like move around the map better and dodge the enemy but since you're automatically f you're probably following a guide which is a mistake like a lot of people do you're not really thinking for your own self you end up just putting three points into this and now because of that you're gonna be like behind in your blink and then you end up dying because you didn't notice him press his arcane boots okay two deaths now we're like we're not even close to our battle fury which means that we're not even gonna get it like 16 17 minutes un unless some the enemy feeds us okay so for tping in top 
and they were just saying they're all here. So in this in in these kinds of situation where it's like I can't do anything about this situation, where it's like there's like three heroes in my lane, I can't do anything about it. You should generally just let them take your tower. Just go back here and farm. Rather than farming here, go back here and farm. Why do I want to you to farm here as opposed to here? Because here they might just like dive you and kill you, which will waste a lot of your time. And also the fact that there's only like a small and a medium camp here. Whereas here you have like a large and medium camp. No way for the enemy to gank you. And you also get like free regen from this fucking tombstone. Right? So when you, you have to like go back there. Because you're just like farming inefficiently losing HP here. But when you go here, you see like you have like 7 HP regen which is a lot. And you let them take this tower which is good. Okay. And now it's just like the first component that you bought for your battle fury is broadsword right so that's like 15 damage pretty it's like it's like pretty i would say it's like pretty greedy it's just like you're just thinking that oh if i have more damage i'll farm faster but you're not considering the fact that your hero needs hp regen to farm because you don't have any wave clearing capability so it's going to take you a lot of time to clear these camps right so when you buy this item you're just like automatically delaying your battle fury even though it's just like a component of battle fury but it's delaying your game because you're gonna need to buy region items or you might need to just like uh kite the creeps even more which is gonna waste your time but instead if you just like spend a 200 more gold and bought cornucopia it gives you half the damage that you're gonna get from broadsword and you're also gonna get hp region which is like pretty good so never fucking buy anything except for the cornucopia whenever you're buying battle fury on every battle fury buying hero they all benefit like you see like struggling here okay let's see what you do here Okay, team's fighting here. You see, you have like a lot of information, right? You see three heroes here. You see one hero here, which means that four of them are here. The only hero that is missing is Earthshaker, right? So Earthshaker cannot solo kill you. Uh, that much is obvious, unless he has a blink. Even if he does have a blink, he can't solo kill you. Which means that when I see, when I have this information on the map, that I see three heroes here, one hero here, I'm free to farm the next wave. But you're not going to go for the next wave because you don't know creep wave timers, right? So the creep wave spawned exactly 27 seconds ago, which means the creep wave is going to be here, right? So in the next five seconds, it's going to be like near me. So instead of like blinking here, I should farm that wave, push it, push that out first, because if I farm this and then go for the wave, there's a good chance this five fight is going to be over and then the enemy can rotate top to pressure me. But if I've already pushed the wave into them, then the wave is going to be here and they have to address it here rather than inside my jungle where they can pressure me. So what happens here is the wave is here, right? The wave is here, but I'm not, I'm not anywhere close to it right so i'm just like wasting time this half of this wave is like already dead i didn't get anything right so i have like more information again i see multiple heroes here again four of them four of them heroes right and also know where the white position is so i should form the next wave as well which is good now you do it which is which is fine because you have information okay so your team's lost the fight and your team's lost the fight and everything's gonna reset. There's a good chance the enemy is going to TP top or something. So you should just like go back. So in this case, it's just like, rather than farming the small camp, you should farm something that gives you more. So in this case, I would go and farm the medium and the large camp rather than the small camp because it doesn't give me anything in terms of that. Okay, so now I'm TPing bot. The thing about TPing bot is sometimes it's good. It's just like, oh, the, the enemy is not gonna pressure me. Their tower is dead everything but the problem is your hero is incapable of farming against us at the moment it's like i'm gonna push this wave in and then what if i have to go back what do i farm can i farm ancients without battle fury nope i can't i'm gonna die farming them so when you tp here you're just like kind of locking yourself out on the map and then another thing about this lane is the fact that you're a hero who's basically you're basically afk for the first 20 minutes of the game at this point right so your team is essentially playing 4v5. So if you stop playing the dead lane, which is essentially the enemy waves pushing into your tower and you're not deep, deep pushing them for your team, the pressure that is going to, going to be exerted on your tier two, someone else in your team has to uh, address it, right? So when someone else in your team addresses it, he's also AFK. Now you have like two AFK heroes and your team is suddenly playing 3v5. You're automatically putting your team at a disadvantage by TPing bottom. Like this TP would be good if you had Battle Fury. Then you could just like push in waves really quickly and then you could also farm ancients, but right now you can't do that. So when you're going to TP bottom, you're just basically forcing yourself into a bad situation where you can't do anything, right? Like no one was bothering you at top. Literally no one did anything to your top. You just like chose just TP bottom because you saw a big wave, right? So I would say this big wave could be fine on one condition, right? You can farm this wave and you can farm the next wave and then you just like portal back top. Then it could actually be a really, really good move, but let's see what you do. 
Okay, so you're TPing in. Farm, farm, farm. Farm, farm. Now you're like against this void, which you can't do anything about, right? He's like, like he's stronger than you. So farm, farm, farm. He's pressuring you. Wait, he might just feed you here. Oh, he has... Again, he has healing lotus and stick, which we did not see. Thankfully, we get swapped out. And now, what are you gonna do? Right? No one touched you at top. No one was doing anything to you on top. But you decided to TP bottom. To a place where you potentially saw void before. And now it's like, okay, I'm gonna farm this. And then where do I go afterwards? What do I farm? Can you farm ancients? Nope, you're just gonna get this and then you're done. Now you can't get anything. Now you have to go to base. But imagine if you were just top farming here. You would be fully healed up. And this wave that is going to eventually push into your tower would be deep pushed and you wouldn't have to do anything. Now we TP back to bottom again, right? So now look at my Ursa. The guy who could potentially fight is also in a dead lane. I don't want to fight. I'm in a dead lane. My team's losing 3v5. Look at this situation, right? Sniper's kind of owning. But you see what, what I was talking about. Like now you're forcing yourself to fight even though it's your Ursa's job to fight. But since you forced him to go to a dead lane, now you're the one fighting, creating space for this Ursa. It's not his fault. You just forced him into this situation, right? You have to think about dividing the map. Now you're going to try to farm this ancient creep, but look what's going, what's going to happen to you. You lost all of your HP. And it's like purposely just like made yourself farm less, right? So let's do a comparison, right? Let's just do a comparison. Let's just go a minute behind, right? So right now, my net worth is, let's just say 5k, right? I'm 5k. And in the next minute, I'm going to farm... Like how much did I farm? So I farmed 300 gold. 400 gold, right? Pretty nice. Let's just go 5 minutes earlier, right? Uh, let's just go when you were top, right? Let's just count your minute for top. Let's count from... Uh, this point forwards, right? It's basically 1150. You do this really poorly, but let's just count from here. 1150, right? 1150, I'm at 3.8k. Okay. Okay. You do this really poorly, but let's just let's just see whether you farm more. So we still have 20 seconds. And we farm like 500 gold. Almost like 500 to 550. Even though we fucked it up and we still have 10 seconds, right? So what I'm trying to say here is that a place where you can get to farm side camps and creep waves is where you want to be. Like bottom lane, you can't even farm the wave because they're just like pressuring you. And you can't even farm the side camps because it's just ancient creeps. So you purposely force yourself in a situation where... It's just like dog shit for you. And now you're going back to base again. And now you're going back top, finally. So you purposely just like delayed your own battle fury timing. Also, and now just like Ursa just like have this lane, had has this lane, and you can't do anything about it. And the worst part is now you're just like locked out of the entire map. Right? They took bottom tower because you can't address it. And the guy who could address it is top lane because you forced him to play top because you TP'd bottom. And now two lanes are pushing into you, mid lane is pushing into you. All, actually, all three lanes are pushing into you and slowly you're losing the map. Especially the fact that you don't have a battle fury, so you cannot split push that efficiently either, right? Because your battle fury timing got delayed. So this is like usually a lot of people find themselves in this situation that, oh, my anti-mage, uh, because we have anti-mage, we're in this really bad situation. I'm anti-mage, my team is not making space for me. So what do I do in this situation where the map is locked out? My friend, you're locking yourself out. Any good anti-mage player would never let this happen, right? A good anti-mage player would have a really decent battle fury timing. And when he has this re really decent battle fury timing, he knows how to play the map properly. So in terms of like playing the map properly, the more your lanes are like pushed out, the less chances of the enemy to fight you. It's like, the, like we want to avoid the enemy at the moment, right? None of, no one in my team can fight the enemy except for the sniper, but sniper alone is not good. I want to avoid the enemy. Ursa wants to avoid the enemy as much as he can so that we can all farm and eventually win the late game, right? But that's not going to happen because the enemy is going to force our objectives and then we'll, we'll be forced to fight them or give up our objectives, right? So, but if they don't have waves, right? If they don't have waves, then they can't force objectives because of bagged or protection, right? So how the fuck do, will they not have waves? The only way they could not have waves is if we cut them. But since we don't have Battle Fury and since we don't know how to play the map properly, that's never going to happen, right? We're going to completely get locked out of the map. It's just like, oh... They're pushing in, I'm typing go end because I just like fucked up this entire game by myself, right? That's like the whole point of this session is to show people that there's a lot you can do in a game of Dota, right? Most people think that, oh, it's just my team. It's not your team. You're playing against the same five players who are in the enemy team that, ha that are in your team. The only 
uh, deciding factor is you. The only difference is you in this team, right? Your four teammates are basically the five enemies. And there's, there's just you who's making a difference. But in this case, I would say that you're the one who is griefing your own team by making these all mistakes, right? There's like very large amount of mistakes. And I'll just like, you don't have Battle Fury, so you can't cut. They're moving. It's like, if you had Battle Fury, you could just go back here and cut this wave. And then you, they can't do anything about it, right? The only way you actually die in this game is if Earthshaker, like... If, the only guy who can solo kill you is Void, and you see him already. And the other guy who can kill you is by just like, Invoker plus Shaker, maybe? But both of those heroes need multiple heroes to kill you, right? So you see Void here. You also see him TP here. Now it's like, I can just go bottom and farm. You're trying to just like fight these guys. Like, what are you going to do here? You can't do anything. It's just like, it's not like you can go and fight them. Your team has like really good high ground defense, right? Because of the sniper. So it's just like, I can go bottom. I can push this wave out so that two waves are pushed out. And if the enemy does anything, we just at least have, have the capability to just like force them to come to top or bottom. Like how you force the void to go top. You didn't do it, but uh, anyone in your team who pushed it, forced them to do it. And now just like standing here doing nothing, right? Whereas we could just like farm this lane. We saw Void TP top. We see four heroes here. No one can contest this. We can out farm our battle fury here. But we're just like wasting time here, doing nothing. And then when we go here, the enemy is already in our triangle, so we can't play, right? This is the thing, right? If we did this 20 seconds earlier, basically when this was happening, if we did this right now, when we saw the Void TP top, we if we do it right now, the wave would be all here already here when they come to my triangle, and then I can just like portal top. Right, but since I'm wasting a lot of time here, that doesn't happen. If you want your replay to be featured in one of my YouTube videos, such as this one, join my Patreon where you can get tons of benefits along with the chance to have your replays analyzed extensively. The link is in the description. The enemy team comes to my triangle, and then we're fucked, right? Now we're just like locked outside again, and now we don't have our Battle Fury. And now I'm just like trying to fight with my team, even though my hero sucks at fighting. And it does seem like a good fight because... Void is not here. Your team has vision. But you're just like not doing anything, right? It's just like you don't have really any impact in this. It's like your team does not need you to do this. Your team needs you to like farm your battle fury and like push out waves. And now it's just like you have waves here. But since you don't know creep wave timers, you're farming this ancient camp. Whereas you should be here farming this creep wave. And the next creep wave, right? So we got at almost a 20 minute battle fury, right? Which is because of the early mistakes that we made. And now it's just like we see multiple heroes here. So we should push in the mid lane. Like, next wave as well. Do not go here. There's, like, no point of you going here. You cannot fight them, right? Your job is pushing the waves so that you can get maximum amount of farm. It's like, I have Battle Fury. I'm going to go and try to fight them? Or, like, what's going to happen here? Nothing, right? You're wasting your time again. You should push out this lane. Push out the next wave. Force their towers. You should only fight as AM when you know that you have your Manta at the very minimum. It's like, you're just basically delaying your timings by a lot. It's like, now I can just, like, farm towards bottom side. I don't need to go top. Right? It's like, if they force my tower, I have a TP, I can always TP back to it. There's not a problem, right? Like, I can just pressure this tower, make them TP, and then one of them, when one of them TPs bottom or mid, then we can take, like, a 3v5 fight because Void is dead. But I'm just, like, going here, trying to fight them or, like, whatever, right? I'm just, like, wasting my time. I'm not accelerating my farm after Battle Fury. I'm just, like, chilling, doing nothing. Whereas I should be here on this side of the map, farming Ancients, farming this camp, and then pressuring this lane again and again. But I'm just like forcing myself to be backwards on the map. I'm just not not trying to be in front of the river, right? Like here, we see three heroes here. Void here, which means this lane is free for me to push in. And if I see them playing like this, and I know that they want to force my objective, look with the creepy of timers. Wave spawned at eight, sec uh, eight seconds ago, right? So it's going to be like here in 10 seconds. If you know creepy of timers, you would know this, right? So now I could just like blink here rather than going backwards and cut the next wave and then go back top. So that they can't push. If they, if they don't have creeps, they cannot force this objective and if they can't force this objective they can't force a fight so uh, all i need to do is like buy time for myself and my team so that i can come online but when i'm here farming the worst camp in the game that does not offer anything not even this lane right like this is like a much better option like just cutting this wave which is like here this is like the first best option when you cut it then they can't force objectives the second best option is this you don't even avail the second best option right and now it's like now i'm gonna go here but they're already on your high ground right now they can actually just come to to you and just like kill you so since i'm already here i'm not cutting this wave they can keep forcing high ground right but your team's doing pretty well right but right now i'm just like hitting this camp i should farm the next wave and then hit this tower right now look at their tps this is good you're farming the next wave as well look at their tps right 
If they TP, then we'll care. Otherwise, we don't care. So at this point, it's just like 55, right? And we see them, okay, they don't have a wave. So if it's 55, the next wave is going to spawn in 5 seconds. So I should already be here and cut the next wave so that they can't force high ground when my Ursa is dead. It's just like, when I'm going to be here, it's like the next wave, look at this next wave. It's already moving, right? And now they can force high ground because they have creep waves, which I did not cut. I could have cut this very easily, but I did not do it. Because I'm not thinking about how do I avoid the enemy from forcing fights with my team when I know I can't help my team, right? So the only way you do that is by cutting waves. When there are no waves, they cannot force objectives. And when they cannot force objectives, they cannot force fights. And if they cannot force fight, they will run around on the map trying to chase you. And since you're like a very mobile hero who they don't have enough catch for except for the Chrono, you can make them clown around on the map very easily. But since you're not doing that, you're going to think of like, it's, it's just like a helpless situation, but it's not, it's, it's, it's not a helpless situation. It's like, again, we could cut mid, but we're not doing that. So we give them free mid raxes, right? And now you can run away, which is fine. But you're not like farming fast. You're not cutting waves. It's like, you're not doing either. So it's like, okay, I see all of them here. Like I have all of this information, right? And now I can cut the next wave. It's like, if I can't fight here, like my sniper can just shrapnel the first wave. I can cut the next one. But what I do here is that I just go back here. I'm not cutting the next wave. I'm not doing anything. You see, like, you're not cutting the next wave. You're just, like, chilling here. Oh, my God. Okay, so you blinked in, and now you're just gonna die. Because you blinked in. Instead of cutting the wave, you're forced to fight, and now you're dead. It's like, look at this situation, right? Um, okay, so, sniper's gonna get rid of this wave. Wave is gone. They have to go back. Now, if I just cut this wave, and the next one, if I can, what do they do? This lane is pushed in. This lane is pushed in. We will just get backdoor protection and they can't go high ground. But instead, what we do is just we just like go inside them and just like die. Without our manta, right? So now this void is like 6k gold ahead of me, right? Which is like a really bad situation. My entire team died. There's a wave. So now they can go high ground. They can actually go three side now because half my team is dead. And yeah, now this is like a very bad situation for you. Okay, they're diving. Maybe they're going to throw. Unless. Nope, they're not throwing. I'm dead, the waves are gonna push into me, probably gonna go three side, right? Which is something that you mentioned uh, in your comment in the intro that I, that I showed that I couldn't do anything. They were, we had like, they had megas at 27 minutes. This is the reason why they have megas because you're not cutting waves. It's like, again, we see all of them, but you're not cutting this next wave. We're like farming the worst camp in the game. It's like, void is that the only way I die is chrono, but I'm not like pushing out these waves. Okay, now we're just gonna be very active about actually you need to think about where void is right if you see void then we can play the map very freely so again right i see void here i can just push in the top wave very easily so you're sending your illusions to do it when you should be the one to do it because your illusions don't farm that well and then again it's just like now there's gonna do this and Ideally, you should have like Ags plus one more item here if you're playing the hero properly, which you are not. So if you had those, we, you can just like fight here and win the fight and then end the game. But we're not at that point where we can do that, right? We're not even cutting mid wave, right? It's just like 30, I should just cut the mid wave so that this lane doesn't push in because one lane is already pushed into them. But since that's not happening, this lane is pushed in. My team's getting fucked. Chrono is used. Now I need to TP back and try to kill this Pugna or whoever I can. Because Chrono is used, now I can actually do something. But since I'm not looking at that or something, I don't really know what to do. And now I'm just like trying to just like trade a tier 3 for Megas. And if they don't have Chrono, I, don't, I, I can fight, but I'm not trying to do that. Now this is like a really bad situation again. But you see like all of this stuff is just like basically your mistake, right? Like you could make this game much, much better for yourself. If you understand how exactly your hero works, right? Anti-Mage is a hero that strives on... Anti-Mage is a hero that strives on the fact that I'm going to cut waves. I'm going to make the enemy chase me. While they chase me, they're not farming. I'm farming. My network lead is increasing. Eventually, I'm going to buy items and I'm just going to kill them, right? It's like a really decent anti-mage game if you buy Ags, right? Bristle, no catch. Pagna, no catch. Invoker, no catch. Shaker has catch, but not reliable. Uh, uh, Void has chrono, but since you're so mobile, you can actually just keep dodging it, right? So in this situation, it's like if I would have probably my Diffusal and my Ags, right? If I had both of them, then I could probably kill this Pugna, but I don't have either of them. You guys are actually owning now, right? Because you have items suddenly. 
But yeah, it's just like the the game is just like very. So you see, like, why are you farming these side camps when you have megas that you have to get rid of? So you need to like get rid of the fact, like, the most basic practice that you can give to yourself is, for the next ten games, imagine you don't have jungle camps at all. All you have is lane creeps. When you start thinking about only lane creeps, you will start like your brain will open up. It's gonna start thinking about how can I. Um, safely farm creep waves. How can I do that? And when you're going to do that, you're just constantly going to watch the map. Your map awareness is going to increase because you're like, you can't farm jungle, right? Because that's a rule for you. You can only farm creep waves and that's like the only source of farming the map. So when you're going to think about it, you're going to think about how I can do it safely. But right now, you're just not thinking about it at all. You're just like mindlessly farming whatever you see, regardless of thinking what is better, what is worse. Okay, Chrono use. He's not even chronoing you, right? So now you can just like dive this invoker or dive like possibly invoker. But you're just like chilling. Even though the Chrono is used, you're not jumping in. Because you don't really have a good understanding of the hero that you're playing. That how do I actually fight and stuff like that. Now I'm just like fighting this guy who has a battlefield, uh, butterfly. And the game is like very hopeless. They have megas. And the game is pretty much over after this point, right? So if I have to summarize what you did wrong in this game. Is that you had a really poor laning phase. Which led to a really bad item timing. Right? Not just that. Like your battle fury was like on anti mage, two things matter a lot. Your battle fury timing and the way you play the map. And the way you play the map has its stems, right? It stems to other things. It's just like it's gonna stem to how you're gonna cut the waves, how you're gonna dodge the enemies, stuff like that. For that you need to understand the creep wave timers, you need to understand how waves are gonna work, you need to understand what kills you, what doesn't kill you, right? And the battle fury timing is just basically understanding having a good laning phase, right? So in this case it's just like Bristle and Shaker can never kill me. Like, I can't kill them either. It's, like, kind of hard with the Mirana, but they can't kill me either unless I make a really bad mistake, right? So if I constantly aggro the creep backwards and it's, like, play off of that, I can very easily get out of this lane with, like, 4.5k net worth, right? But since that didn't happen, I got out of the lane with, like, 3k net worth, right? And after that, it's just like, yeah, my tower died. It's whatever. It happens a lot. Like, you get out the lane with very less network, but you recover. You still get a 15-minute battle for your timing in most cases, right? But what you did wrong was that you TP to the wrong side of the map because you didn't understand that my hero cannot farm Ancients at the moment. Like, if you don't have Battle Fury, you clear the waves really slowly. And when you clear the waves really slowly, the enemy has more window to gank you. The enemy has more window to jump you. But if you clear waves really fast, they can't really do anything because uh, you're just, like, blinking around, clearing waves really fastly. They don't have the same... They can't outpace you. But without a battle fury, they can't do it, right? So you were like having you're you were having a really easy time at top lane, right? And then suddenly you TP bottom, and you force your Ursa to go top. And then since your Ursa went top, now you have two AFKs in your team, and your team is forced to play three v five. And then you can't do anything here, so your farm was like lowered to two fifty to three hundred GPM because you can't farm ancients, and they're not allowing you to farm these side camps. So you were just like stuck in the situation because of that. Your battle fury was like twenty minutes. And after that, you did not think about cutting waves at all. Like, your mindset was just, like, so involved on the fact that, oh, the enemy team is just, like, very hard to play into. Or your mindset was involved in the fact that, what is my team doing? Why do, do I have a Mirana without setup? Or, like, why do I have an Urson offline? None of these things matter. Like, it's, like, the most basic technique that you can use is just the most basic mental technique that you can use is that, imagine if I'm in this game as an anti-mage, right? Imagine if... Any 5, 6k player was in the same game, right? This is like 3k average. If any 6k player or 5k player was in the same game, or if he plays on your account, 10 anti-mage games, he's going to win like 9 out of 10, or even maybe 10 out of 10 games. Because he's just a better player, right? So the question that you need to ask yourself is that, is it really my teammates, or is it just me? Right? Dota is like a very good game, in terms of this. It's like, it has a very rewarding system. Like, the matchmaking system is actually pretty good, if you ask me. It's just like, if you're skilled, you're going to improve. You're gonna go up. That's just how it is. You're just like playing really poorly, right? If you cannot outfarm a guy who's like of similar level, he's like legend one. You're also legend one. You're both three KMMR. If you cannot outfarm this void, how do you expect to get out of this bracket? You're not gonna get out of this bracket because you're playing as worse as everyone else in this bracket. So you have like no reason to judge or blame your teammates or even listen to them, right? So it goes both ways. It's just like you can't flame them, but you can also not you should also not listen to them because they don't know what they're doing. You need to play play on your own pace and you need to think about how can I 1v9 this game. Every time you feel like mentally stressed, as in like my teammates are doing this or that, just ask yourself, if Miracle or if Pain or if like BSJ was in my game on the same, would he would he lose this game? Your answer is probably going to be no. 
they would not lose this game. They would pretty much stomp this game. So, in short, if you want to fix these issues, work on your aggroing. Work on the fact that aggroing is like very... It's like serene. In the laning phase, if you know how to aggro really well, you're going to get out of any lane. You could play against the brood and you still get out of that lane because you're just like really good at aggroing, right? And then you could... And then after that, work on playing the map better. And after that, just like learn kill thread and how to cut waves. All of this I've explained in this session, right? In this video, I've explained everything. When you watch it, you'll know like what, what you need to work on. And when you do that, even like half of it, you're going to start winning a lot of games. If you wish to gain MMR and become a better player, I offer coaching packages where I personally help you to get better. There's an insanely valuable package that guarantees unlimited coaching sessions till you hit Immortal, which has only one slot left. If you're interested in that or educational discussions, join my Discord linked in the description. Other than that, I'm currently on my road to 9k MMR and stream educational content regularly on my Twitch channel. You can follow it in the description. Lastly, do make sure to subscribe and like the video for more high quality content like this. And do let me know your thoughts about this video in the comments. Have a nice day and good luck with your games.